Okay, so find the curvature of the twisted cubic portion here. So given R of T at the point zero, zero, zero. Oh yes, the X means cross product. So yeah, so we're gonna be doing a cross product of two different, because these are two different vectors, so we do a cross product. Okay, so we need a couple things before we get any further. So we find the derivative, second derivative, and the length of each one individually, right? So cross product, all that fun stuff itself. So first, let's take the derivative. This is this is a little easier to deal with. So derivative of 2t, irregularly, that's going to be 2. Derivative here is going to be 2t. And then derivative here is going to be negative 6t squared. So while we're at it, why don't we just take the second derivative to make it easier? So 0, 2, and negative 12t. Okay. And now let's do the rest. So again, since we're at it, why don't we just find the magnitude of the derivative, since we all need it anyways. So therefore, the magnitude of the derivative is just going to be 2 squared, so 4 plus 2x goes be 4t squared. And this squared is going to be plus 36t to the fourth. Okay. Now, again, this may look horrible, but remember, we're plugging in 0, 0, 0. So essentially, when t is equal to 0. And look at that. All of that goes away. We're just left with a square root of 4, which is nicely 2. Everybody loves that, right? So now we find the cross product of r and r prime, right? The two derivatives. So I know what you may think. You want to just plug it in and call it a day, but I want to show you guys how the cross product will be played out with these two. So just release this example. So r prime, so 2, 2t, two and then negative 6t squared. And the derivative, 0, 2, and then negative 12t squared. Okay. And then we just find the cross product, right? Just like the old-fashioned way you did it. Yeah. This can focus be great. There we go. So again, like I said last time, I'll spare you the basics, but if you uh, find this cross product, um, you will get this. And then you plug it in at the point zero, 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 or essentially t equaling zero which makes this much easier to deal with, right? So that's gone, so negative 24, 24. Oh, no, T, this is T, sorry. T, so that's zero. And that's four, right? Yeah, so that's four. There you go. So find the magnitude. At this point, so it'd be negative 24 squared plus 4 squared. Oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. Okay. This is a T here. Let me just do this real quick. Okay, that's T. Okay, so that's a T here. So this is zero. Oh, even better. I knew this, I made these examples easier. There we go. Gives us that. So therefore, our curvature. Let's go back to our equation.
Okay, so what do we have? So we have the magnitude of the cross product, which is four, divided by the magnitude of its derivative, which is four, or sorry, which is two. So we have two to the third power. That'd be four divided by two times two is four times two is eight. So it ends up being one half. Oof. So don't be like me, just be careful of your, your cross product when you when you do it in your head. Any questions here at all? No questions? Okay. All right. So again, we'll talk about that. Last part of this is if given a curve in the form y equals f of x, so now we're talking about f of x, not the not a vector, but a normal function as we know so far. Okay. What if we want to find the curvature of any arbitrary curve in two dimensions? Or in, right now we're just three dimensions. Well, or in this case, respect to t and x. Then we can change the curvature from vectors to functions in this format where it's the, not the length, but the absolute value of, F of, of the derivative of t at t divided by one plus its derivative squared to the uh, was it three over two root. Whew, that looks like a lot, right? It's actually not as bad as you may think, which is the best part. Yeah. All right, so. And I made a little mistake here. This is supposed to be x. So just going quickly, just change that portion there. Because it shouldn't be t, it should be just be x and y, respectively. So everybody make sure to change that right there. All right. Let's see how difficult this equation is going to be. Now remember, this is a regular old s, right? So this is what we used to be doing way back in the day. So in this case, let's find the the curvature of y equals 2x to the third at the points 1, uh, 0, 1, and 2, 7. So let's say this is like a part A. This is a part B. Okay. okay. So first, there's a, if of x is equal to 2x to the third, well, I'll, I'll write notation pr properly. So we're going to find the derivative. So f prime of x is just going to be 6x squared. And since we need the second derivative anyways, we'll take the second derivative, f double prime of x is 12x. Okay. okay. So now if we plug everything into here, I'll do the exact same uh, process. So k of x, I'll give you the arbitrary uh, equation, is going to be the absolute value of 12x divided by absolute value of one plus f prime, so six x squared squared, all raised to the power of three over two. Okay. Now that's the general equation for the curvature, but we want specific points, which is the best part. So now all we're gonna do is plug in um, zero and zero one respectively where it's supposed to be and, and so forth. So for example, at the point zero one, well, that means I'm going to plug in zero in for X. I'll put this down here at point zero one. So curvature at zero is just going to be 12 times zero over one one plus, uh, what is this, 36 x to the fourth. 
Yeah, so that's going to be 0. 3 over 2. So we get 0 over 1, which is 0. Hmm. We'll talk about that when it means it a little bit. And then again at the point 2, 7. So at the point 2, 7. So now I plug in 2. So 2, 12, 2 times is 24. At the bottom here, we have uh, 2 to the fourth times 6. That's a really big number. Where's my calculator? Thirty-six. So if I did this correctly, you guys can check me. It gives me something like that. So two to the four times thirty-six. So adding one is five seven seven. Raised to the three over two. Gives me 24 divided by a very big number. We'll just round to the nearest whole number and make it easier for ourselves. And I'll just leave it like that because that's going to be a really small decimal. So that's our curvature. Now, let's talk about this real quick. Zero. So let's think. If you remember, this kind of looks like this. Sorry, can't see it right there. Where's our point zero one? Our point zero one is right here. And our point two seven is somewhere up here. Do you agree at exactly zero? It's neither going up or going down. It's literally flat at that point. So remember when we talked about these being unit vectors everywhere. So at this point, because it flans out and then it goes back up, what is the derivative at this point? Zero. So because the derivative is zero, and because this whole curvature is, is um, in terms of the derivative, therefore, it kind of makes sense why the curvature would be zero. It's not really going up or down. It's just flat. So this directional derivative would literally just look like that. It's flat. It's not going anywhere. On the other hand, we go to 2, 7, which is, you know, let's just say approximately there. This curvature is going up very, very, very slowly, right? Barely going any higher. Because once it gets to arbitrary values, yes, it goes up. It pretty much goes almost on a straight line because it just tracks it going up at a certain point, right? Even after like 4, it's almost, you know, what is it? Yeah, like 4 is pretty much already up there, you know, to the ceiling. So what these numbers represent is, again, like it goes back to the change of the direction and much more specifically how actually steep it actually is. Okay. So you can describe what's happening to the curve just by knowing the curvature of it as well. Because the curvature is all represented based off its derivative, which is the tangent line or the tangent derivative, the unit derivatives themselves. So it's just a fun little fact there knowing 
so that now you could find the curvature of points. And now you could see, okay, is the curvature going up, down, and how fast is it going up, down as well? And you can see if the curvature is exactly zero, therefore it's a literally flat line. And again, if you're wondering why I did this way, it is just like everything else, right? We always, as we read, we go in that direction. So we go this way, which means if it was going down, I would go this way instead of going that way. It's just, you guys are wondering why the arrows are always pointing to the right. 